Good morning, good morning, my precious saints. How are all of you wonderful people doing? We will end this year strong in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, on this morning, I want to talk to you about a word called chosen. You need to understand this. I'm talking about chosen on this morning. This message would help you realize whether you are chosen or not. Now we know a whole lot of people are called because the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. You know that scripture used to trouble me for the longest until one day the Holy Ghost opened my eyes up several years ago to this scripture. It's a game changer. You need to hear this word. I say you need to hear this word. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Come on, help me worship him on this morning. Sing it to the Lord this morning. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Your holy presence. Come on, church. Living in me. Living in me. This is the air I breathe. Come on, sing it to the Lord. My God, my God. This is the air I breathe. I don't know about you, but this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Your holy presence. Guess where it's living? My God. Living in me. I can't live without you, sing. And I, I can't live without you. I can't live without you. Can't live without you, Jesus. Can't live without you, Jesus. I'm desperate. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. This is my daily bread. Sing it. This is my daily bread. Oh, we worship you this morning, Jesus. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Your very word spoken to me. Come on. Spoken to me. And I'm desperate for you. And I, my God, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. I'm desperate for you this morning. Come on. And I, I, I'm desperate. I'm desperate for you. We love you this morning. Lord, as we're about to go into the word, minister to everyone under the sound of my voice. Speak to them. Strengthen them. Encourage your people on this morning. Let them walk away with revelation knowledge. Let them walk away with the heart of God, the mind of God, the will of God, a greater understanding that will cause them to appreciate everything that they have to go through in this life. God, because it's not easy to have to go through the fire. But give us your wisdom this morning and have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Someone say a good amen right there. So on this morning, I want to talk about chosen. There is a difference between people who are called and people who are chosen. You'll see where I'm going with this. Let's go into the book of Matthew chapter 22, verses 14. Listen to the word of God. And this is Jesus Christ himself talking. Jesus said, for many are called, but few are chosen. Few. Man, this thing troubled me for the longest. Until some years ago, the Holy Ghost opened my eyes to it. I tell you, it's a game changer. Let me read that again. For many are called, but few are chosen. You know that word, that word few means little in number, a small number or a small group. Just a small group are chosen. 
Oh my God. We going somewhere with this. Many are called, but few are chosen. <clears throat> now, I, I'm going to read you a scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 10. And this was the scripture that the Holy Spirit used to open my eyes and my understanding to help me be able to distinguish the difference between the many who are called and the few that are chosen. Now look, everyone under the sound of my voice, if you are honest before God on this morning, you would say, Pastor, I want to be in that few that are chosen. I'm telling you, I'm in that number. I'm in that group. The decision is up to you if you want to be chosen or you just want to be in the large group that are called. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the elite group of the few that are chosen. Now, here comes the deciding factor, which group you are going to remain in. You can stay in the many, many that are called, or you can step up to the plate and allow God to put you in the group where only few are chosen. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Listen to what God said. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. Here comes the big one. I have chosen thee. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Let me read that again. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. Hold on, slow down. That word chosen right there means to be selected. It means to be picked out. That's, that's totally different from the many that are called. It means to be selected. It means to be picked out. Watch this. It means the best of its kind of class, excellence, preeminent. And it's only applied to certain individual Christians. Don't you want to be in this group of, in this few that are chosen? Now, here comes the determining factor whether you are going to stay in the group that's the many that are called or in the group where the few that are chosen. Here's the deciding factor. Christ said many are called, but few are chosen. And then Isaiah tells us the rest of the story. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. The people who are willing to go through the trials and tribulations, those who are willing to go through the testing willing to be tried by fire. That's the place where God chooses us and puts you in that elite selected few, in that group that's only a few there that are chosen. That is the determining factor. You decide it by whether you are willing to pay the price and go through the furnace of affliction and let God purify you. Let him try you. Let him test you. You go through trials. You go through tribulations. But that's the very place where God decides you are chosen. And it's up to you. And this is why the Bible says many are called. Because the many who are called, the minute the trials and the tribulation comes, they turn back. They don't want to go through that stuff. They don't want to go through the fiery trials. They don't want to go through the tribulations. They rebel against it. And as a result, they stay in diapers. They stay an immature Christian. They never experience the wonders of God, the power of God, the, the great anointing of the Holy Ghost to bring change into their families, to bring change into their marriage, to bring change into their churches, into their, into their towns, their villages, their cities, their countries, and the rest of the world. Are you listening to me? So that's the determining factor. If you despise that tribulation, which we all do, there's nothing wrong with despising it. The Bible says even Christ despised the shame and the suffering that he had to go through, but he went through it. That's the key. You got to be willing to go through it because the people who would say like Job, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
even though he has allowed me to be tried by fire. I'm in this intense persecution, tribulation. People are mistreating me. They're misunderstanding me because of my walk with God, but I'm still willing to hang in there. I'm still willing to keep my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about walking in kingdom power, in kingdom prosperity, in kingdom authority. Are you hearing me? In kingdom favor, in kingdom influence. You have to be willing to be tried by fire. That's the place God chooses you. Because God sees how you are willing to go through like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come on out of the fiery furnace. And when they came out of the furnace, Daniel chapter 3, verse 30 and 31 says, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's why Joseph, he was thrown in a pit. He was lied on by Potiphar's wife and thrown in a dungeon. Joseph had to wait 13 years before the dream that God gave him come to pass. But because Joseph was willing to be tested and tried and go through the fire, Pharaoh brought him out of that prison and promoted him over all of Egypt. Are you hearing me? Before that promotion comes, before God stamps you approve, you are going to have to be tested. Let me read a scripture here about the call of the apostle Paul. This is when Jesus appeared to Ananias in a vision. Listen to this. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 through 17, and then I'll wrap this up. Listen to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the Lord said unto Ananias, go your way. For he, talking about Saul, who was, who, he was Saul first, and of course his name was changed to the apostle Paul. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, why would Christ say in advance he is chosen? Because Christ knew Paul. He knew what kind of man he was. He knew Paul would be willing to go through the fiery trials. Listen to what Paul said out of his own mouth in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 through 27. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes. Man, this man took a beating for the kingdom of God. Listen to verse 25. Three times was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night on an entire day. I have been in the deep. Out there in the ocean lost. Swimming trying to get to land. That's what the Bible says. They made it on boards and broken pieces of the ship. This is, some, this is serious stuff. Listen to what he said in verse 26. In journeyings. Often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Verse 27, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, staying up all night praying, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Paul was willing to pay the price. Even though he was called, Christ called him chosen in advance because Jesus said, this man is going to be willing to go through the furnace of affliction. That's why I can call him chosen in advance. Many are called, but few. Look at what God did with the apostle Paul. This man is the Moses of the New Testament. He wrote more than half the New Testament. Why? Because he was willing to be tried by fire. He was willing to hang in there. He was willing to fulfill the will and the call of God at all costs. And Christ said, he is a chosen vessel. He is chosen. Don't you want to be chosen? If you want to be chosen, you are going to have to make up your mind. God, I know I'm being tested. I know I'm in the fire right now, but I still put my trust in you. I refuse to curse God and die. Job's wife said, all of this, man, curse God and die. Job said, you speak as a foolish woman. Are you hearing me? Listen to me, saints. Stay in the fire. Let God purify you. Let him test you. Don't try to be like everybody else who want to run ahead of their time. 
Don't, don't try to be like everyone else who want to shortcut their way to the top. Those people are not going to last. They are not going to survive. Take your eyes of other people. That's why the Bible says to compare yourselves among yourselves is not wise. Take your eyes of what's happening in another person's life. You go through your fiery trials. You go through your tribulations because the Bible says many are the afflictions, Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but out of them all, the Lord delivers him. And when God brings you out of your trial, when he brings you out of your trouble, oh my God, there is an elevation for your life. There is a promotion. There is a trust in your relationship with God. You are someone that he can count on. You are someone that he can trust with ministry, trust with power, trust with authority, trust to run that business, trust to run that job. That's why Joseph was promoted because he passed the test. Are you chosen or are you just called? That decision determines, you determine that by deciding if God wants me to go through the fire, I'm going through it. That's why Isaiah prophesied it. Isaiah said, this is God talking through. When you go through the water, I'll be with you. And through the flood, you won't be drowned. When you go through the fire, I'll be there and you will not even be burned. That's the fiery trials. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from out of the fiery furnace, not even the scent of smoke was on their clothes. That means when God bring you out of what you went through, people ain't going to even believe you went through it. Because what you went through, you are not going to look like what you went through. You are going to look like who God wants you to be. Job says he knows the way that I take. That when he try me, I'm coming forth as pure gold. And it's the gold that went through the fire that's put on display. It's the diamond that went through the purification process that's on display in the jewelry store. It's the car that have been banged up, broken up, smashed, crashed. They put it together. They put the dummies in it and they crash it again. They pull the car back apart, put it back together, put the engine back together, crash the dummies again. And after the car survives all of that crashing, they stamp it approved, put it together, put a nice paint job on it and put it in the car dealership. And that's the car you going crazy over to buy. Why is everyone at the dealership, their mouths watering, they're looking at these cars, they're laying hands on them, believe in God, because those are the cars, those are the vehicles that Pass the test and have been stamped to prove. If you just hang in there a little while longer, God himself is going to stamp you approve. This is the air I breathe. My God, this is the air I breathe. Oh, glory to God this morning. My God, this is the air I breathe. Your holy presence. Come on, church. Your holy presence, my God, my God, living in me, and I, I'm desperate for you, I'm desperate for you, I'm desperate for you, Jesus, I'm desperate for you this morning, come on and lift your hands to heaven and say, God, if you want me to go through the fire, I'm willing to go through it, God. I'm willing to put my trust in you, in the trials, in the tribulations, in the good times, in the bad times. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praises, His praises shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together mighty God chosen 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 glory to God father I pray over your people on this morning I pray those who are going through intense trials tribulations persecutions misunderstandings they're in the fire right now God but I pray that they wouldn't quit. I pray that they would go through the process. God, you've got something great on the other side of this trial for their life. You are about to stamp them approved. 
Help them not to give up. Help them not to walk away from the furnace of affliction. Because the furnace of affliction is the entry point into promotion, into God elevating your life. I pray your strength this morning. I pray that God would help you to focus. I pray that God would help you to realize that Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, but I'll be with you even unto the end. I surrender all. I just feel the Holy Ghost moving on me right now to make this call for salvation. This is the end of 2018. My gosh, there's only three more, three more days, two more days left in this year. And some of you, under the sound of my voice, you hadn't made that decision for Jesus this morning. But I'm determined to take you into 2019 as a born again child of the living God. The Holy Ghost is speaking to your heart right now. It's time to surrender to Jesus. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Jesus said, I've come not to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Without any hesitation or procrastination, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in desperate need of forgiveness. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me of all of my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the son of the living God, died on Calvary Cross, and on the third day, God raised you from the dead. If you prayed that prayer, my friend, your sins have been forgiven. You are now a child of God. And let me and Pastor Amy be the first to say to you, welcome into the kingdom of the living God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things. I passed away and behold, all things are become new. God loves you this morning, my friend. Your sins have been forgiven. And we say to you, welcome into the kingdom of God. The anthem. We serve a mighty God. We are soul saving ministry. Souls are being saved and coming into the kingdom of God. Sick bodies are being healed. The discouraged are being encouraged. The devil is being defeated in the lives of God's people. That's what this broadcast is all about. Christ and Him crucified. There is only one superstar on this broadcast and His name is Jesus, the Son of the living God. He said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I'll draw all men unto you. And we endeavor, we are committed to preaching the old fashioned gospel until Jesus comes. We are not going to water it down. We're going to tell you the truth in love because God knows what you need best. Listen, I want to give you an invitation to sow a seed into the ministry, to give an offering, to give a donation to support this gospel of the Lord that we are preaching. You can visit us online right now and give through the ministry secured website. That address is seanpinder.net forward slash give seanpinder.net forward slash give if you prefer to use the ministry paypal account that address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries if you prefer to mail in your donations make your checks and your money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas, 75011-7442. Never forget this. Me and my lovely wife, we love you. We care about you. We deeply appreciate you. We believe in you. We are believing God with you for your miracle for your breakthrough, for your turnaround. And listen, if you are a pastor in the island of Freeport, Grand Bahama, if you are a pastor in Grand Bahama, I'm inviting you to be a part of a pastor's luncheon that I will be hosting January the 4th, 12.30 p.m. of this upcoming year, 2019. 
I invite you to be a part of the pastor's luncheon. It will be at Ruby Swiss Restaurant. Make sure dial the number to RSVP, 646-9494. That, that phone number is 646-9494. So if you are a pastor, a senior pastor, under the sound of my voice, you and your spouse are invited to be a part of that pastor's luncheon. We are going to have a great time of fellowship. I will be sharing the vision with you for the upcoming Freeport Miracle Crusade on March the 8th and the 9th. I will be sharing, sharing and encouraging you to believe God. We serve a miracle working God. We're going to serve you a, a good meal. We'll have someone out there to minister one or two songs in worship, but we're just going to have a great time in the Lord and I'm believing God with you to give you your breakthrough passes, to give you your miracles, to give you your turnaround. We serve a miracle working God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless all of you under the sound of our voice. And never forget, Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy, we love you. We care about you deeply. We are believing God with you for your miracle. I'll see you again on tomorrow morning on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.